The sages said, O oh, excellent one, please explain the rules of worship of clay deities, by following which all desired results will be achieved. Sutta said, You have requested a very good thing. Deity worship bestows all wealth always. It suppresses misery instantaneously. I shall explain it. Please listen. It wards off premature and foul death. It prevents even a timely death. O oh, Brahmanas, it bestows womenfolk, sons, wealth, grains, etc. The worship of deities made of clay and other materials is conducive to the attainment of all cherished desires in the world. From it, the devotee derives food, medicine, cloth, etc. Both men and women are authorized in this. The clay should be brought from the beds of rivers, lakes, or wells. It should be washed well and pasted with scented powder and milk. The deity should be made with the hands on a raised platform. All the limbs, joints, etc. should be perfectly shaped with the respective weapons of the deity concerned. It should be seated in Padmasana, lotus pose, and worshipped respectively. The five deities, Ganesh, Sun, Vishnu, Parvati, and Shiva, are usually worshipped in their images. But only a Brahmana shall worship the phallic emblem of Shiva. To derive the full benefit of worship, the sixteen forms of service discussed earlier shall be observed. Sprinkling of water over the deity shall be performed with flowers. The pouring of water shall be performed with mantras. The food offering shall consist of cooked rice of shali variety. In the worship conducted in the house, twelve handfuls of rice, kudava, shall be used. In the worship in the temple constructed by men, a prashta, a particular measure of cooked rice, shall be used. In a divine temple, three prashtas of cooked rice shall be used. In the worship of self-manifested image, five prashtas of cooked rice shall be used. If thus used, it gives complete benefit. By using twice or thrice this quantity, the benefit shall be greater. By performing this worship a thousand times, a brahmana shall attain satyaloka, a vessel made of wood or iron, twelve angulas in width, twenty-four angulas in length, and sixteen angulas in height, is called Shiva. An eighth part of it is called a prashta, equal to four kudavas. If ten, a hundred, or a thousand prashtas of water, oil, incense, etc., are used in temples of human construction, of saintly worship, or of self-risen deity, the worship is called Mahapuja. The ceremonial bath is conducive to the purity of the soul. The application of scented paste yields virtue. The food offering is conducive to longevity and gratification, and the incense yields wealth. The lighting of the lamp is conducive to knowledge, and the betel leaves are conducive to enjoyment. Hence, in all worships, these six items are scrupulously observed. Obeisance to the deity and repeated recitation of mantras accord all cherished desires. They must be observed at the end of the worship by men who seek both worldly enjoyment and salvation. At first, all items shall be gone through mentally, and then every rite shall be performed item by item. By the worship of deities, the devotee attains different heavenly regions. 
In the subsidiary worlds also there is an ample scope for enjoyment. O Brahmanas, I shall narrate the special types of worship. Please listen with faith. By the worship of Ganesh, the devotee shall attain his wish in this world itself. The days of special worship of Ganesh are Fridays, the fourth day of the bright half of the lunar months of Shravana and Bhadrapada, and the Shatabhishak Nakshatra of the month of Dhanus. He shall be worshipped duly on these days. Or the devotee shall worship continuously for a hundred or a thousand days. As a result of the faith in the deity and in the fire, the worship yields sons or the different wishes to the devotees. It quells all sins and various hardships. The worship of Shiva and others on their respective days of the week is conducive to the purity of soul. In regard to Kamya rites, the basis is either the Titi or the Nakshatra or the particular combinations of planetary positions. The day of the week is the basis for the worship of Brahman and others. There is no increase or decrease with respect to the days of the week as in regard to the Titi, Nakshatra, etc. A day is calculated from sunrise to sunrise. The worship of the deities on the respective titis, etc., is conducive to full enjoyment for the devotees. In regard to rites of the mains, the earlier part must be in contact with the night previous. In the worship of deities, the latter part must be in conjunction with the day. If the titi extends to midday, that part of it which falls at sunrise shall be taken for the worship of the deities, so also in regard to the nakshatras. Hence, a devotee shall consider all these aspects and proceed with the worship, repeated recitation of the mantras, etc. The word puja is thus derived. Pu means the achievement of the fruits of enjoyment. By the right, one achieves the fruits. Jayate means is born. Good ideas, knowledge, etc. also are included in this. The word puja is used in this sense among the people as well as in the sacred texts. The daily and occasional rites yield their benefits in due course, but the fruits of kamya rites are instantaneous. The necessary rites are performed every day. The occasional rites are performed in particular months, fortnights, years, or on special occasions. In the Kamya rites, one derives the fruits after the sin has been duly quelled. Mahaganapati Puja shall be performed on the Chaturthi day of the dark half of the lunar month. That rite wipes off the sin of the whole fortnight and yields enjoyment for full fortnight. The worship performed on the Chaturthi day of the lunar month of Chaitra accords benefit for a month. The worship performed in the months of Singha and Bhadrapad accord enjoyment of worldly pleasures for a year. The worship of the sun shall be performed on Sundays, or Saptami, the seventh day, or in the Nakshatra Hasta of the month of Shravana or on the Saptami in the bright half of the month of Mag. The worship of Vishnu is conducive to the attainment of all desires and wealth if performed on Wednesdays, Dvadashi, the twelfth day, or in the Nakshatra of Shravana in the months of Jeshta and Bhadrapad. The same worship in the month of Shravana yields all desired wishes and good health. Propitiation of Vishnu on the Dvadashi day yields the same benefit as is derived from the gift of the twelve things with ancillary rites. The devotee shall worship twelve Brahmanas on the Dvadashi day, assigning them the twelve names of Vishnu with all the sixteen forms of service. He shall gratify the deity thereby. Similarly, Twelve Brahmanas shall be worshipped after assigning them the twelve names of any deity to gratify that deity. 
A person who seeks prosperity shall worship Parvati, who bestows all worldly pleasures on Mondays, Navami, ninth day, and in the nakshatra of Mrigashiras in the month of Karkata. The Navami in the bright half of the month of Ashvayuj accords all desired benefits. The worship of Shiva shall be performed on Sundays, Chaturdashi, 14th day of the dark half of the month of Mag, on the Ardra nakshatra, and on Mahardra day. It accords all cherished desires. The worship is conducive to longevity, prevents premature death, and accords the achievement of everything. The worship of the different manifestations of Shiva with all 16 forms of service and homage on the Mahardra day in the month of Jeshta, on Chaturdasi day, or on the Ardra day in the month of Margashirsha, is on a par with Shiva's worship and yields worldly enjoyment and salvation. The worship of the first deity of the weekdays in the month of Kartika is specially recommended. When the month of Kartika has arrived, the sensible man shall worship all the deities by giving gifts and observing austerities, homas, japas, restraints, and the sixteen forms of service. The deity shall be worshipped with mantras. Brahmanas shall be fed. The devotee shall be freed of desires and distresses.